morning, Cornerstone Church. Are you so happy to be here? Happy Sunday. Um, guys, I was so nervous about what God laid on my heart this morning. Um, but then as I got here and certain things kept happening, I kept thinking, yeah, this is, this is what it is. This is what needs to be said. And so a couple weeks ago, I was having a really rough week. And I just let things keep getting to me. And then finally I realized, hey, this is a spiritual attack. You know, you need to armor up. So then I started reading the armor of God every morning and praying that. And um, I think that's something that sometimes we forget to do. And my prayer for you is that this morning you'll put on your armor because here is the fact of the matter is, is that Satan is real. And he wants to distract us. And he wants to keep us from worship. And I don't like to give him attention. But at the same time, it's so important that we stand up and we say, in the name of Jesus, get out, Satan. You are not welcome here. So in the name of Jesus, Satan, get out. You are not welcome here. You do not belong here. And we are here to worship. And that's what we're going to do. So my prayer for you is that you will just let everything go this morning. Put on that armor. Lift your hands and praise if that's what it is for you. If it's falling at the altar, fall at the altar. Because nothing else matters except for him. And all he wants is you. So just stand with us and worship and just picture his face.
Kind of goes similar to what Kara was saying, but if you're doing the chronological reading plan of the Bible, this week we finished the Old Testament. Yeah, and so um, that was a journey, wasn't it? And then just as you come into the New Testament after reading the whole story of the Old Testament, and you see all along all he wanted was our heart, and um, so many things that we could do, um, we can serve. We can give of um, our tithes. We can um, be a good person. But all he really wants is your heart. All those things don't mean anything if you haven't given your heart to him. And um, over the last week or so, man, the world seems just so hard, doesn't it? And I look at things and I'm like, you know, the tragedies that happened this week. I think, God, we've got to get our heart right with him. You know, and, um, you know, our family has seen death over the last couple of weeks, and that will transition your heart to think that this, to remember that all you're doing here is just temporary. You know, and um, I've talked a lot with my kids over the last couple of weeks is, guys, this is temporary. One day, it'll be your last breath, and then you will meet your maker. Will it be too late? Or will you make him your savior today? And so I beg you, I want you to think about where is your heart today? Where is your heart? Maybe you're not a Christian. Make today the day of salvation. And if you are a Christian, where's your heart? You know, if you find yourself and you don't know where he's at, you, you're struggling, where's your heart? Have you talked to him? Have you been in the word? Like, where is your heart? Because all of these things won't matter anymore. One day, we will be with Jesus for eternity. And please, I beg of you, do not walk out of here today unless you know him as your Savior. And today, as we sing this next song, I want you to think about where is your heart? What is it focused on? Wednesday night, we talked about how God is a jealous God. And uh, we talked about the emotion of jealousy can have both bad and good um, pulls to it because God is a jealous God. He wants your heart. He doesn't want it divided by idols. And so as we sing, just pour out to him. Imagine him standing before you and how focused is your heart on him. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i made it when it's all about you it's all about you jesus king of endless words no one could express how much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within 
the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry. It's time for the sleeper to wake. It's time for the old winds to change. Oh, I hear the Spirit say, it's time. It's time for the day. Let the light in, open up the windows. 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 Let the light
Good morning, church. Good morning. good morning. Good morning. We all pulled the old bait and switch on you this morning. You thought you were getting Darren, um, and you got to put up with me. We do that so because uh, we know if everybody found out that I was preaching, you would all schedule your vacations on the same day, and it would just happen to be this day. Um, no, but uh, I'm uh, grateful that I get the opportunity to be here with you this morning in this role, in this capacity. I um, also want to say thank you to Amy and our worship team. Um, so if we can give them a big round of applause. They did wonderful. Um, and it is such a blessing to me to get to be able to focus on uh, this part of God's calling on my, on my life and, and um, for them to be able to step up and lead us in worship at such a high level. So I'm thankful for them um, and everything that they do. Um, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to get to gather here with you in this capacity and get to share with you what God has laid on my heart this week. Um, but firstly, so this morning we had our all-star breakfast. I want to thank you guys. For everything that you do around here. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, we have our all-star breakfast once a year, and that's to celebrate everybody that serves in any capacity here at Cornerstone Church, <clears throat> Church because we could not do the things that we do here without you guys. We definitely couldn't do them to the level that we do them, um, and you guys are awesome for that. And I don't know if this is private information or not, but last week we had over 200 people. You can, you can clap for that. We had over 200 people um, gathered here, and we had a couple different things going on, but that just highlighted to me that the more people we have going here, the more people we need involved. So the more people it's going to take to be able to operate the ministries and things like that. So if you're here this morning and you don't serve, if you weren't able to come to the All-Star Breakfast, I really encourage you to find a spot to get plugged in, find a spot to serve, and then for next year's All-Star Breakfast, you can come join us for that um, and be celebrated for that. And uh, one more thing about the all-star thing. I, did, I realized this when I was uh, pre preparing this week. So Darren uh, gets to pick or he pre um, will ask me like, hey, how do, you, how do you feel about this day to preach? And I'll be like, okay, it terrifies me, but okay. Um, <laughs> so this is two years in a row that I've pre got to preach on the all-star breakfast day. So I think that makes me the all-star preacher of <laughs> Cornerstone. And like, again, Darren picked the day. I didn't pick the day. And you, you, you can you can take from that what you want. I just wanted to highlight that for you guys um, this morning. And also, we have a baptism at the end of service. Um, Rory is going to be getting baptized this morning um, after Brian Young stole the show last week. Um, <laughs> we had to we had to baptize Rory this morning, so Darren's going to get to do that um, here in a little bit, and we're excited about that. We're looking forward to that. So I'm not going to try to take up too much of your time this morning. Um, let me give you a little hint about preachers. You can always tell um, how long the service is going to go by the number of gray hairs on their head. So if you get a silver hair up here, probably should have packed the lunch and brought a soda pop. Darren's got a little salt and pepper going on, so you, your stomach may be growling a little bit by the end of service, but you're going to be okay. But me, I may not have much hair, but at least none of it's gray. So you guys are going to be the first ones to the Mexican restaurant after the service. So if nothing else, we can be thankful for that this morning. Um, I'll try not to keep you too long. Um, but I'm excited to get to share with what 
share with you what God has laid on my heart this week. And I think Amy was been, has been uh, peeking at my notes because almost everything that she said is written down here on this paper that I have. Um, so that's cool that God, um, at least I don't think she's been peeking at my notes. So if that's true, it's cool. God um, unifies us around what he wants for us to share this morning. So if you hear a lot of the stuff that Amy already said, that's be- I-, I had it prepared beforehand, I promise. It didn't just come from her. But I want to talk about your heart and your hands and how your heart, I know that little sign says greater than, but uh, your heart is over your hands is kind of the idea that I want to focus on. And if you've hung around me for very long at all, you've probably heard me say um, in some way or in some capacity that God cares more about the intention of your heart than he does about the action of your hands. So God cares more about the intention of your heart than the action of your hands. And that's what I want to um, focus on and and share with you this morning. Um, So we're going to begin reading in Genesis. Last time I preached, I went Genesis to Revelation. This time it's just Genesis to Luke, so not not quite as much. So you guys get a little bit of a break this morning. Um, But I want to focus on the fact, or I want to highlight that um, when I talk about our hands, I'm talking about the physical tasks that we can perform with our hands, right? So these can be um, things that can distract us from God. There's plenty of, kind of like Amy already mentioned, there's plenty of stuff out in the world that can distract us from what God wants for us, right? Amen. Yes, no. Nobody agrees? Okay. Maybe one or two of you agree. Um, But more importantly, and what I want to focus on this morning, that the work of our hands doesn't necessarily define the intention of our heart, but it's the other way around. So you can't fake what's going on in your heart with the actions of your hands. It has to be the other way around. It has to co- the work of your hands has to come from an intentional heart. <clears throat> and God cares more about the intention of your heart than he does the work of your hands. So we are going to read in Genesis chapter 4. If you brought your copy of God's word, lift it up in the air. So I want to encur- every time I get up here, I will c- encourage you guys to bring your own copy of God's work. So I'll let you in on another little secret. The scriptures that are up here, I put those in the computer. So if I got something wrong, then you know you guys are you guys are banking on me to never make a mistake, and that's not something you want to bank on. So I will always encourage you to bring your own copy of God's word. That way you can double check me or whoever else is standing up here. Um, so always, always, always bring your own copy. Anyway, I'll get off of that. So we are going to be reading in Genesis chapter 4, and this is the story of Cain and Abel. Anybody ever heard of that before? Have you ever heard of Cain and Abel? Yeah. Um, so Cain and Abel were Adam and Eve's sons. Adam and Eve, first people that God created, right? Right? Okay. Um, got a couple of you on board. We'll get there, I promise. So Cain and Abel are the sons of Adam and Eve, and we'll start reading in verse 4. It says, Now Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, and Cain was a worker of the ground. So right there we can start to see the differences between Cain and Abel, right? So Cain's a keeper of the sheep, and Abel, sorry, Abel is a keeper of the sheep, and Cain is a worker of the ground. Um, So Cain had sheep, Abel had I guess fruits and veggies, that's what I think in my mind. Maybe maybe you guys can come up with something else that springs up out of the ground, but that's all I've got. Um, and before um, before I go any further, I, w- I do want to mention that um, there is something to be said about the physical offerings that they brought. You can look ahead in Leviticus, and God gives um, a, 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 a correct way and a way that things are supposed to be brought to him in an offering. Because at this time, Um, in the Bible, this was pre-Jesus, and we know right now, after the fact, that we get to come to a relationship with God the Father through His Son, Jesus, because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, yeah? But they didn't have that in this day, so they they had to make sacrifices to atone for their sin to look ahead to Jesus, who's coming later. Um, So that's the purpose of this, and God does have a a, a correct way that um, He wants these to be carried out, Um, and there is a difference in their physical offerings. So I don't want to I don't want to pretend that that's not happening here, but I want us to focus on the intention of their heart, right? So there was a different action in their hands, but I want us to focus on the difference that's going on in their hearts. So um, Abel brought Abel was a worker of the sheep, Cain was a worker of the ground, and we'll keep reading in verse four. It says, "And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions, and the Lord had regard for Abel." 
and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So he accepted Abel's offering, which was the offering of the sheep, and he rejected uh, Cain's offering. And in my Bible, it says regard. Um, in your Bible, it may something a little bit differently. It may say something like looked upon. So um, if you trace this back to the Hebrew wording, it means that God. So when it comes to Abel's offering, when he said God had regard for his offering, it mean, he meant he looked upon it with favor. So he looked upon it and had favor in his heart for the offering that, that Abel brought to God. And then on the flip side, when it says, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. If you, again, if you look back in, in the Hebrew, it said, um, it says something along the lines of he, so he was able to look at, sorry, he was able to look at Abel's offering with favor in his heart. And when it came to Cain's offering, he had to turn away from it. He looked away. He had to turn his gaze away from <clears throat> Cain's offering. And we can get a little bit uh, clearer picture of what was going on if we look ahead to Habakkuk 111. And it says, God cannot look upon wickedness. And it uses a lot of the same, the same wording for it when it's talking about Cain's offering. So in the same way that God can't look upon wickedness, he couldn't look upon Cain's offering. So what that tells me is if God can't look upon wickedness, if God can't look upon evil, if God can't look upon sin, and the offering comes from the heart, it's an act of worship. That means Cain's heart was full of wickedness. Cain's heart was full of sin. So again, God saw that the offerings were different, right? God saw that the things that they did with their hands were different, but that wasn't what God judged. God looked in their heart. And when he looked on Abel's heart, who he had favor over his offering, we can get a little bit uh, clearer picture when we read about Abel in Hebrews 11, which is the hall of faith of believers, right? Right? Okay. And it's, when it talks about Abel's offering, um, God talks about it in a way that he is commending Abel for his faith and his act of worship through his faith. And when it comes to Cain's offering, God couldn't even look at it because God can't look at wickedness. God can't look at sin. And it wasn't because of the act of their hands. It was because of the intention of their hearts, right? Right? Okay. Just making sure we're good. <clears throat> so Cain had a heart of wickedness, and he was trying to justify the evil in his heart through the actions of his hands. Anybody ever done that before? We'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit further on how I've very much done that before. Um, I spent a lot of my life trying to justify the evil in my heart through the actions of our hands. And it's such a dangerous trap, but we have to get it the other way. It has to go the other way of where we can get to a place where the intention of our hearts drives the actions of our hands and not the other way around. <clears throat> so we are going to go flip ahead to Luke. I said we were going to get to Luke. Here we go. <clears throat> Luke 46, 43 through 45. Luke 6. 43 through 45. As soon as I hear the pages stop turning, I'll start reading. I'll take your time. Like I said, we weren't going to be here long, so the longer you guys can take up, the longer we'll go. Anyway, in verse 43, it says, For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its fruit, for figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. So that's pretty straightforward, right? Good tree, good fruit, bad tree, bad fruit. Bueno, this means yes, this means no. Okay. Um, so, and then on verse 45, it goes on to say, the good person out of the, and I want us to focus on this, out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of the evil treasures produce evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See, it doesn't say out of the abundance of the speak. I don't. I can't. I can't say that backwards. <laughs> but it doesn't say that the mouth comes first. It says that the heart comes first, right? It says that our heart controls our lips, and the same can be said about our hands. Our heart controls our hands. Our heart controls our actions. <clears throat> and uh, I think it's important to highlight um, the Greek word for heart here. See, we in English we have one word for heart, and we think of like seven pounds of muscle that goes dum 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 dum. 
jump, right? At least I do. Um, but you know, they didn't have a word for just the heart. Their word for heart was their mind, their heart, their soul, and their spirit kind of all crammed down into one. One definition I found was um, the effective center of our being. So it's not just our heart that we're focusing on here. It's, it, it's more than that. It's who we are. It's what makes us tick. It's the center of our being. And so when this talks about a good person out of the good treasure of his heart, it means that who we are, the center of our being has to value good before we can produce good, right? The center of our, our, of our being has to value God before we can produce godliness. <clears throat> so again, our, our hands and our mouth follow the intentions of our heart. See, God was able to look favorably on Abel's offering because of what his heart treasured, right? It's not because, it wasn't about the, the, the offering that he brought with his hands. It was that offering of worship that he brought with his heart. He was able to look favorably on Abel's heart because God is what Abel's heart treasured, right? Amen. And on the, the flip side is true. God was, wasn't even able to look at Cain's offering. He, Cain brought his offering and his heart was wicked and he laid it at God's feet. And God said, I can't even look at it. I can't even look at your offering because your heart is full of sin and your heart is full of wickedness. <clears throat> we're buzzing through this. Um, so God, it, what, it's not about the action of our hands. Um, it's about the intention of our heart. Um, and I want to share with you guys um, kind of my testimony because this is kind of a story of my life. Um, so if I get welled up and start bawling like a blubbering baby, I guess y'all are just going to have to follow along with it. And uh, yeah, and give me a second. Um, but as a lot of you guys know, I was I was raised in church. I had a very uh, church, my mom's back here, so she's, if I say anything wrong, she'll probably yell out from the back and bust me afterwards. Um, but I, ha- I had a very uh, Christian upbringing. I was raised in church, but at that time in my life, my idea of church was, it, it wasn't this. It was, it was, what do I look like from the outside? What do I have to do um, to make it look like to everybody else that I've got my stuff together? Um, and that was my, I'm not saying that, that was from anybody else's doing other than my own and my own outlook on it. Um, but that still doesn't change the fact that um, my, my idea of church, my idea of Christianity, my idea of what it, was, what it looked like to be a Christian was only that I had my ducks in a row, I had my shirt buttoned up just right, I had my shirt tucked in. Um, and that led to me um, at seven, because I knew that it was what you're supposed to do whenever you go to church and you're, and you're a Christian, you, you say the sinner's prayer. Um, but at that time, I didn't have any idea of what it meant to be a sinner, I didn't have any idea of grace, and I certainly didn't have any idea uh, about repentance. But so I did that and I got and I got baptized and I did all the things right because I knew um, that if you do that, you get paraded up in front of the church and everybody claps for you and everybody celebrates and everybody um, thinks that you have it together. Right. For you say the sinner's prayer and you get baptized and you do all the stuff that you're supposed to do. You, you look like you have it together. But um, as we now know, the, the work of our hands doesn't define the intention of our hearts. Right. So I did that at, at a very young age. And if you would have looked at my life. Um, from the outside, you would say, man, what a great Christian he is. What a great little boy Keaton is. You know, he's always early for Sunday school. Um, he always raises his hand, always knows all the answers. Um, you know, always obeyed my parents, never said, a, never backtalked, never did anything like that. Um, see, she's probably going to pipe off from the back there in a minute. No, but, no, but I want to highlight that if you looked at my life from the outside, you would have saw exactly what you expect. When you, when you think about a Christian who's in a right relationship with Jesus Christ, if you looked at my life, that's what you would have saw seen, but that didn't change the fact that on the inside, as far from it, so I, I, I lived that way for about, uh, so I was about 12 or 13, and um, I remember just hearing God knocking at my door, right, so every time I would get quiet and I would get still, God would be there, and he would say, Keaton, I don't want the action of your hands, I want it to be the intention of your heart, so I spent the, the, the next few years of my life doing that way, and every time God would knock, and he would say, Keaton, I don't want the action of your hands. I want, the, I want to be the intention of your heart. I would say, no, God, you don't understand. You don't understand. Don't you see my life? Don't you see the fruit of my life? Don't you see all the things that I'm doing for you? Don't you see all the, the, the change that I'm impacting for you? That At that point, I started leading worship um, so I, I could sing and play. So play the guitar. So you get thrown up on stage, and you start leading worship. Everybody's like, man, Keaton's so great, man. He can play the guitar. Man, what an awesome little Christian he is. Man, at such a young age, he's got it all figured out. And that's the way I live, but in, in my, in, it was all a lie, right? It was all, it was all a mask. 
So I lived that way for the next, um, you know, four or five years. And every time I would get still, I would hear that knock. And God would say, Keaton, I don't want the action of your hands. I want to be the intention of your heart. So I got really busy, and I just worked even harder. And I said, you know what, God, I'm going to prove you wrong. I am going to prove you wrong if I work hard enough, and, I, and if I get it all figured out on my own, if I, if I do all the right things, and I look the right way, and it looks like I'm good from the outside, then it must, I must be right on the inside, right? And, but every time I would get quiet, God would be there knocking at the door, and he would say, Keaton, I don't want the action of your hands. I want to be the intention of your heart. Um, and that, like I said, that went on for about four or five years. And um, until the summer I graduated from high school when I was 18. Um, and I remember this very vividly. Um, all summer long, um, so back then I used to cut grass like for money in the summers. And every time I stepped on a lawnmower, God would be there. Keaton, I don't want the action of your hands. I want to be the intention of your heart. And every time I got on the mower... Keaton, I don't want to be, I don't want the action of your hands, Keaton. I want to be the intention of your heart. So we, we went on and this, through the same old stuff, but God, don't you see what I'm doing? God, don't you see my life? Don't you see how good of a Christian I am? Don't you see all this stuff that I'm doing? Can you not see all this? And God would say, Keaton, I don't want the action of your hands. I want to be the intention of your heart. Um, and to, to, to highlight what a stubborn individual I am. Um, at that point, at the end of that summer, on August 23rd of 2016, I was going to two revivals at the same time. So um, I was I started going to college, and they had like a campus ministry, and they were having a revival on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. And my home church that I grew up in was having a revival on Sunday, Monday. You know what a revival is? Everybody like the old school, like, you know, I don't, we don't do that as much anymore, so I want to make sure y'all know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> no, so, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, my, my, my home church was putting on a revival, and I was leading worship at it, right? So, like, I've got to have it all figured out. And um, then the, the campus ministry that I was a part of, we had a revival on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I was like, God, I am going to show you. How can I not be a good Christian? How can I not be doing what I'm supposed to be doing? I've gone to, like, eight uh, church services this week, and it's not even Wednesday yet. Like, I've got I've to have it figured out, right? And every, every, every church service, every time I would, I would step into the door of God's house, he would be there. And that knock just kept getting louder and louder and louder. And, and, and all week, all I could hear was like God screaming at me. And he would say, Keaton, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about how good you play the guitar. I don't care about how good you sing. I don't care about the time that you put in. Keaton, I don't care about the action of your heart, of your hands. I just want your heart. I just want to be what your heart treasures. So at the end of all that, um, I've been to two church services on Sunday, two on Monday, two on Tuesday, um, and I was in my second church service on Wednesday night, and, and a guy named uh, Brock Harden was preaching, and he, he was sharing his testimony, and it looked a lot like me, and I, I really don't know what else he was saying because all I could hear was was God going like that the whole time and at the end of it I said that's enough that's it that's it I'm sick of it I can't hear anything else except God you knocking and you telling me I don't care about your hands and I just want your heart and on August 23rd 2016 at uh, 9 23 in the evening I uh, gave my life to Jesus Christ um, and I surrendered yeah thank you. So um, I surrendered my life to Christ, and I made him the treasure of my heart. And that's not to say that I then had everything figured out, right? Um, as a matter of fact, like, I've, I've stumbled maybe more than I, from the outside, it looks like maybe more than, than what I did before. Um, but from that point on, my heart treasured Christ, right? He was the treasure of my heart. And that's not, again, that's not to say that I've always done everything right because you line up my mistakes with any of y'all's and I, I, I promise mine will probably be more. Um, but at that point in my life, God became the treasure of my heart. And that's what I want to, that's what I want you to understand. Um, like I said, I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time, but this is so important, guys. This is so important. We have to make God the treasure of our heart. Um, <coughs> sorry, I got a little choked up here over up here told you I was going to be a blubber and baby I'm like Sarah <laughs> um 
Yeah, so um, that's, that's my question for you this morning, is what does your heart treasure? See, we can get caught up in so many things um, outside of church and that, that can distract us, but even inside the church. And that, that's, that's, what, that's what it was for me, um, that we can get caught up in serving in see kids, and that be more important. We could treasure that above our relationship with Jesus, yeah? Even these things that look right, that look good, that make us look like better Christians. See, because if you looked at Cain and Abel from the outside, they both brought offerings to God. They were both bringing offerings and laying them down at God's feet. But like I said, God doesn't care about your hands if your heart's not in the right place. It's not until we get our hearts right. It's not until we make God the intention of our heart that that intention can control the action of our hands. So it doesn't matter what you do with your hands if your heart's not in the right treasure. You can't justify the treasure of your heart by the action of your hands. It has to be the other way around. We have to get our heart right first. Because, um, as we saw there in Luke, it's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. It's not the other way around. Um, the, 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 the hands don't control the heart. It's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Um, you have got to get your heart right first. Um, so Amy's going to come up and begin to uh, play us a time of invitation. I told you I wasn't going to take much of your time. Y'all were, were itching to get to our baptism. Um, but I, uh, I just want you guys to think about that as, we, as we're going to open up the altars and have a time of invitation. And I just want to propose that question to you. Where is your heart is today? What do you treasure? And if, if, if it's God and, you've got, and you're, you're rocking along and you say, you know what? I'm not perfect because none of us are, but my heart treasures Christ above all else, and that's wonderful. Um, maybe this wasn't for you, but I'm, I'm I'm talking to the person whose heart isn't aligned with what for, with what God has for him. Maybe you're treasuring other things in your life above um, above Christ, above God, whatever that may be. We all have different things that get to us um, that we can tr- place our treasure in. But I want to ask you this morning. I want to challenge you to really think about where your heart is and what your heart treasures. So let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we just uh, we thank you for this opportunity to get to come together this morning um, and get to, to open your word and to get to learn more about you, God. I just pray for each and every person in this room um, that we could really um, open up and examine the work, the intention of our hearts this morning, God. Uh, I pray that we wouldn't rely on any any action of our hands, anything that we can do, because we know that we can't do anything with our hands that will justify the action of our heart, the intention of our heart. Lord, so I just pray that um, you will be with us through this morning, um, that we can all just uh, go through this time of reflection, that we can look at ourselves, and Lord, if we need to make any changes um, to our hearts, any changes to our actions, Lord, that you will um, convict us in the right ways and encourage us in the right ways, and that we can um, lay that at your feet this morning as as an offering of worship, Lord. We pray all of these things in your name. I, I'm so thankful for, for Keaton and the message that, that God has uh, brought through him this morning, and uh, it's, it's good that we do a heart inventory every once in a while and see, and see uh, uh, where we're at, and uh, hopefully each and every one of you here this morning uh, has, has done that. And you, and you found yourself uh, that, that God and your relationship with him is the number one focus. It reminded me as he was uh, uh, preaching where Jesus is calling his disciples. And, and um, one of the first things, not one, but the first thing he told his disciples was, come be with me. See, we skip over that part. So the first thing he told them was not to do. The first thing he told them was be. Be with me and be like me. And then the doing we can do like he does, but we first have to be in relationship with him. We first must be or uh, uh, be with him and and be like him, and then the doing part he will add add to that. That will be a fruit of us being uh, with him and like him. And so uh, I'm excited uh, to get to baptize my brother Rory O'Brien this morning. And. And I told him, I told him, I said, I don't care what happens this morning. Me and him can be the only people left in the building. He's getting baptized today. Amen. Amen. I, I'm so thankful for, for how Kara opened this up this morning. Is Satan, you don't have a place here. This is the house of the Lord. 
And he has authority and power, but not only in this house. He has it in every house and in every heart and in every life and in everything that we do. Jesus has the power and the authority. So I am uh, talking too much. Rory is standing over here in this side room, and he says, hurry up. Get me in that water because he's ready to express what God has already done in his heart. He's already, he's already, he's already um, 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 being, and now he's going to share through the doing of baptism his relationship with Jesus. So uh, let's, uh, at this time, let's welcome my brother Roy O'Brien uh, in, into baptism. I'm so thankful for, for him and his family and, and uh, everything that they mean to us. Um, um, he is uh, such a blessing uh, to me. If you, if you haven't had an opportunity to, to visit or get to know uh, Rory, take the time to do that. Meet him today, shake his hand today, hug his neck today. He's, he's uh, uh, an amazing, amazing person, and I am so thankful uh, to be able to get to baptize him uh, this morning. Um, it's such a, such a blessing. Um, do you have anything you would like to, like to share? very thankful to be baptized in this church and with, among all these people. Amen. Amen. But not just baptized into this church, but baptized into the Holy Spirit. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. So Amen. thankful. So thankful. So, all right. With that said, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we come to you this morning and we just thank you so much uh, for Rory and, and uh, his walk of faith and, and his desire to, to follow you and to, to be with you and to be like you. And then to, to do what you'd have him to do uh, in his life. Lord, we pray to Heavenly Father that you would protect his heart, that you protect his mind, his soul, and his spirit, Lord. We know that this life can, can throw difficult things our way, that things can come up, uh, Lord, and, and, and make our, our journey, uh, it seems at times, more difficult. But we know that in our relationship with you and in Rory's relationship uh, with you, Lord, that, that there is a peace that can only come from you. No matter what the storm is, uh, that rages around us, dear Heavenly Father, we know that you can send uh, peace and mercy and grace and love. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that as he walks uh, uh, this journey of life uh, with you in relationship with you, that you would protect his heart and his mind, that you would protect his family, Lord, that you just put your loving arms around him and his family and watch over them the remaining days of their life. And we will give you the honor and the glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. It is now uh, my pleasure and my honor uh, to baptize my brother, Rory O'Brien, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 